talk to us about Satao and you know um, Satao's history and this death now. Well, Satao is one of these 12 big tuskers left in Kenya, mm -hmm. and there's a wonderful organization in the Savo National Parks called the Savo Trust. They work very closely with the Kenya Wildlife Service mm -hmm. in creating awareness about these remaining big tuskers. Satao, like Ahmed before him, uh, was so monumental. He was so big that other elephants look like babies around yeah. him. And he was always accompanied by other big bulls, which we called Ascaris. Mm -hmm. You know, other big bulls would actually be with him and protect him. Satao was um, known to patrol large parts of Savo. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, was like a king among all the rest of the elephants. And um, sometime in March, poachers with bows and arrows shot him. They had a deadly poison on those arrows, and that poison worked its way through Satao's body for weeks. He probably suffered, you know, unbearable pain. Mm. And um, he was observed in March, um, seen with these wounds. The KWS responded with private sector to try and um, treat him, and then they felt that maybe he could survive on his own. It's a very similar situation to Ahmed. When Ahmed died, they actually found bullets inside his body. What? He had actually been shot at, but he had survived those attacks. Mm. Ahmed didn't survive this attack, and it's really amazing. This was just a bow and an arrow that killed him. Um, he died in a swamp called Kanderi Swamp, mm -hmm. and um, quite a few of his Askaris died with him. There's about four or five other dead elephants in the same area. Wow, really sad that it has gotten to this, and this just, you know, um, raising profile in as far as the conversation on, on poaching goes um, because of the stature of, of um, Satao. But it is a problem that has been ongoing, and it keeps, it seems to be getting worse. Why is that? Well, I, I personally think corruption is really at the, the backbone yeah. of this problem. We have elephants in large parts of Kenya maybe 20 or 30 percent only stay inside the national parks. Most of our elephants range outside of our protected areas. Mm -hmm. It requires a unified um, support from landowners who live around the national parks, communities and private landowners. We have 164 conservancies. Those are privately owned protected areas. We need to support them because the risk is that you have elephants in areas which are very poor. For a dealer who's out there to make quick profit, because of the price of ivory in Asia. Yeah. It's very easy to corrupt people on the ground, whether they are communities and you just pay them to go and shoot an, an elephant. You pay authorities like the wildlife rangers themselves, the police, the Kenya ports authorities. You know, people are being corrupted all the way down the chain so that ivory is leaving this country in such huge volumes that Kenya is now number one in the world wow. for the transiting of ivory. It's actually a, a horrible position to be number one for that kind mm -hmm. of a, a thing. It means that Kenya is actually playing a key role in the slaughter of elephants across the entire continent. And last year, 20,000 elephants were killed in Africa. And 80% of that ivory passed through East Africa, most of it through Mombasa port. Mm. Is the government and other stakeholders doing enough? You're in this and we've seen you constantly out there. You're having this campaign uh, going, but is there also political will to, to help curb this trend? Well, there are several things. We've seen the reports uh, from the Kenya government to the CITES Secretariat. So CITES has these big meetings coming up in July. Mm. And Kenya has reported on progress and there has been a lot of progress. We have a new law, one of the most severe laws in the world. So we have got that political will. The president did sign the new legislation. It's now, the penalty for killing an elephant is now life imprisonment. We have the will. Mm -hmm. The courts are refusing to impose that penalty. What do you mean refusing? The, the courts, the magistrates are saying that the way the law was written is too ambiguous. They will not accept charges on a clause that calls for life imprisonment. So that's one challenge we have right now. The mm -hmm. law cannot be used the way it was intended by Parliament when they passed that law. Um, the Kenya Wildlife Service has something like 750 new rangers. So there has been a commitment to recruit more people. The Treasury has just allocated two billion shillings extra for anti-poaching. But the problem is that it's not just the poaching. We are a hub for international tra mm -hmm. transiting of ivory. There doesn't seem to be any commitment towards stopping the big players. We're shooting poachers. We're catching poachers, we're taking them through the court process. We have not caught a single trafficker. 
in this country. Mm. We have not prosecuted a single trafficker. We now have, from that massive seizure in Mombasa, the name of one particular very big businessman in Mombasa whose name has been announced by the cabinet secretary. A warrant for his arrest has been issued. But for some extraordinary reason, nobody can catch this man. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, so is there political will? Not if we're not willing to go for the top guys. If you know, yeah, because uh, then it will just continue to be a vicious cycle if it's only the smaller uh, fish that's, that's been arrested. So a loophole in the law, that needs to be clarified Absolutely. because then uh, for it to have just been, you know, passed in parliament and then it cannot on implementation stage be acted on, that's disappointing mm. in and of itself. But also, when you're talking about the numbers having increased for the rangers in the parks, in as far as them having the facilities and equipment to be able to counter these poachers, do they have that because I understand in recent times the poachers have also you know in terms of technology and the kind right. of um, weaponry they're using they're, they're, they're more sophisticated now absolutely uh, we have um, maybe 2,000 Kenya wildlife service rangers in Kenya mm -hmm. and probably another one or 2,000 private sector rangers many of them trained to very high level these are not just poaching crimes we call it a menace this is organized crime mm -hmm. These are international criminals operating in our country. How on earth could we expect a ranger or a community scout to stop that? It requires all the security agencies in the country to come together on this issue. This poaching crisis is feeding into other kinds of crimes, drug crimes, gun trafficking crimes, human trafficking crimes, and terrorism. So you cannot expect a bunch of rangers to solve it. Mm. It's, it's kind of like saying, we're going to allow our elephants to go extinct because we're not going to put the level of thought and strategy in to actually crush the traffickers and the dealers involved yeah. in this. How badly are we doing in terms of those numbers diminishing? Because we keep hearing of you know, thousands of elephants being killed every other year. In terms of population, where do we stand now? The official figures for Kenya range between 33,000 and 38,000 elephants remaining in Kenya. Wow. Now, we used to have over 600,000 elephants in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we, our population is small compared to where it used to be. Um, I am completely at a loss to tell you what our real population is. Most of our populations have not been counted for more than 10 years, mm -hmm. some of them 15 years. So when we say we have 33,000 elephants, I have very little confidence in those numbers because we're not counting them. And if you ask me how many elephants have died, well, the official figure is 97. I cannot verify that or anything because those data are secretly held by the Kenya Wildlife Service. Yeah. And the public does not have access to information on where those carcasses are. I know that in the Masai Mara area, more than 40 elephants have been killed. And more than 45 elephants have been killed in the Savo area. That's already 85. Yeah. So this 97 is not realistic because we're losing elephants in Samburu, like Kipia, Mount Kenya, Abadez, down in Shimba Hills, up in the Khalifi area. So I just don't understand why we don't have the level of transparency and accountability mm -hmm. that's actually promised in our constitution. Yeah. As Kenyans, we cannot participate. We cannot help because we are not being given the information we need. All right, I want to take a short break when we return and talk about it's big money clearly that is involved in this and, and powerful business persons mm -hmm. uh, in as far as the, why it continues to thrive. You mentioned corruption, but perhaps other factors that could be seeing this uh, continuing with this trend, which um, is putting dangers, uh, danger to Kenya's heritage and as far as our elephants go. And we'll talk about more about hands of our elephants. Stay with us. Morning Express returns in a short while. Uh, CEO of Wildlife Direct, Paul Agahumbu, is with me in studio this morning uh, and more about our wildlife and what's happening in as far as this uh, poaching is concerned. Uh, a crisis in itself in, in as far as that uh, area goes, uh, international uh, conference coming up, you'll talk to us about that in a short while. But there, uh, as you were, were just talking over the break, there seems to be a war on, on elephants, on getting them, you know, getting their tasks pretty much. Yeah, I think that... Um, we need to stop looking at this just as a wildlife a crisis. Mm -hmm. This is really as though there is a war against elephants in Africa. When we lose 20,000 elephants in a year, that's what we know. That's a minimum estimate. It means our elephant populations are c collapsing. We know that 
Sudan has lost 95% of their elephants. Mm -hmm. Tanzania has lost 75% of their elephants. And Central Africa, Congo in particular, has lost 95% of their elephants. It's like we're just ripping this phenomenal, valuable resource out of the continent. Mm. And it's all because people in Asia, China, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, Cambodia, they want ivory artifacts, they want earrings and jewelry. We're actually So that destroying. is what makes it so lucrative, because I was actually just going to get yeah. to that, the market and why it's so lucrative. The price of ivory rose from $120 per kilogram in 2009 to over $2,000 today. Wow. And that is purely because it's fashionable. People want to have the ivory bracelet. People want to have an ivory carving home. They want to say, look at me, I'm wealthy now, I can afford ivory. It's a, it's a fashion that has gone out of control. Mm. And it's not just elephants. We're losing rhinos. Kenya is home to 80% of the remaining East, um, Eastern black rhino. That species, there are only 400 individuals in this mm -hmm. country. That species could be driven to extinction in just a handful of years. Yeah. In the coming years, if nothing is done, what do you see happening? Well, poaching, what it does, the way that these cartels operate, the mm -hmm. way that the um, criminal elements are, are coordinating what they're doing, Mm -hmm. is actually, it's an organized crime. It's attracting violence, it's attracting weaponry into mm -hmm. community areas, it's creating a lot of instability and a lot of insecurity in community areas all across the country. So what I see is poverty really accel accelerating in these areas because communities are losing their source of revenue because elephants are a major attraction for tourism. They lose that option. But they've also attracted criminals into their environment and they've gotten themselves involved in criminal activities. Mm -hmm. And so what we see is actually this implosion of, of uh, our values. But in addition, when you take an animal like an elephant out of an ecosystem, the ecosystem also responds. Elephants are what we call keystone species. Yeah. They maintain these ecosystems. I know of places in Kenya which used to have elephants and they had so many trees and it was green and there were rivers flowing and um, elephants also dig up water in dry areas which allows livestock to survive because mm -hmm. otherwise people cannot find water. When you take elephants out of those ecosystems, they basically collapse. Elephants are critically important to maintain those ecosystem services, nutrient recycling and the creation of biodiversity. Uh, what about the human wildlife conflict? You've seen a lot of that, uh, you've heard about it in the past. Is it still one of the issues they're facing? Yeah. So communities, especially those who live adjacent to the national parks, mm -hmm. have a real challenge with human wildlife conflict, especially elephants, and then predators like lions, hyenas, um, and other cats. Um, the real problem that I see when you uh, impact on elephants, these are very intelligent social animals. Mm -hmm. When you gun down a matriarch, a big female elephant, or the adults in the elephant population, what you leave behind are these young, juvenile, delinquent elephants who don't know how to manage themselves. They, don't, they have no leadership anymore. They're just like street children who have gone wild. And they start raiding farms. They start attacking people because they, their only memory of human beings is that humans kill us. And so the human wildlife conflict is actually accelerating yeah. as a result directly of the threats we're causing elephants. The other thing, what we're seeing in Savo in particular, is the use of poisoned arrows. It's silent. Mm. It's very difficult to catch people who are doing this. Right. What it means is many elephants have festering wounds, which means they're in pain. Okay. It makes them very dangerous. Very dangerous. Finally, our time uh, is up and we need to cross over to Beringo. But uh, talk to us about this uh, as well, the campaign you began, okay. and also your appeal to Kenyans, the government, and other stakeholders that will be involved in right. uh, fighting this poaching. Thank you so much for that. The, the Hands Off Our Elephants campaign was launched last July with the First Lady, Margaret Kenyatta, yeah. really as an attempt to remind all Kenyans from all walks of life that it's our responsibility to protect this incredible heritage that we have inherited or we've borrowed from future generations. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're doing a major campaign to tell people why elephants are so special and also engage the entire population in helping. So we have, we're appealing especially to corporates to join us. Mm -hmm. And we'll start seeing some of this in the next few months of how corporates are getting engaged and supporting what we're doing, especially the tourism industry, travel and tourism, in, tourism industry. Um, and we've just done a campaign with Giuliani, mm -hmm. the singer Giuliani. He's yes. very generously joined the campaign nice. to be the face of a song competition called Ndovu Music. Nice. So we're inviting Kenyans mm -hmm. and citizens from all over Africa to enter a song competition to sing about elephants and our heritage. And 
the final competition will actually result in the production yeah. of a series of songs in collaboration with Giuliani. Yeah. So it's very exciting. It's just been launched with a company called PCI Media in New York right. and the um, Stand Up Shout Out group here in Nairobi. Awesome. And we applaud you for the work that you're doing. Keep Thank it you. up. And uh, we wish you the very best. Paula Kahumbu, CEO of Wildlife Direct. Uh, and of course, it takes everybody to play their role at whatever point uh, they can to ensure that hands are off our elephants and um, that we can continue to have them. Because the saddest thing is, um, you know, generations to come hearing mm -hmm. stories of animals that were sure. called elef wildlife elephants and seeing pictures and um, they need to be able to see them 40 50 100 years to come sure. and we hope that your campaign uh, will play a key role in ensuring that happens um thank you very much for joining us and you for watching the show today before we wrap it up